Hello everyone, I'm That Embroidery Girl and welcome back to another tutorial and this time we're making a swan. So first of all you'll need some jewellery wire, 26 inch gauge is what I've used and you're going to need to twist it loosely together and then push it through the fabric of your choice. Then spread four of those bits out like so, like it looks like a claw, exactly like this on the underside. And then you're going to need to stitch this down. All four of those wires need to be stitched down on the front just to make sure that they're nice and secure. Measure this wire until it's eight centimetres long. Now grab some textured wool or the thread of your choice that you want to make your duck or swan in. I've chosen this. And using a darner's needle, come up and then take the darner's needle and rest it alongside that wire and begin a bullion knot. Now a bullion knot is just wraps and you're just going to wrap it around both the wire and the needle together like you can see me doing here. You're now going to add some cast on loop just over both the wire and the needle like I'm doing all four strands are going to go together to go over and I'm going to repeat this six times and this is just going to give me a bit more of a chunkiness on the head and it's also going to keep the wraps of the bullion knot in place and once I've done that I'm going to thread all these threads back through the darner's needle and then I'm going to pull the needle down and through the fabric and as you can see the end is just going to go, don't pull it too tightly, you want it, you know, just, just enough firmly. I'm then going to press a bend into my neck so it's got a really nice, lovely swan-like shape. So now I'm going to begin the base of the body. This is going to need to be around six centimetres long. So we're going to start a woven picot. You're going to need a long needle and two pins. You're going to come up with your thread and you're just going to go underneath the pins and the needle like so and then go back down. And then come up again in the middle and go round just the needle and then begin weaving. Now the sequence to the weaving is under, over, under, over. So you'll need to be going under one, over one, under one, over one until you get a nice even weave like this, almost like a basket really. Make sure that you've packed the thread in quite tightly and continue weaving until you've filled up the space. Take the pins out and then push the body upwards and stitch into place so you've got a nice arched swan's back. You're now going to just reinforce this neck bit here, put a few stitches in. And now you're going to start the beak using one full strand of embroidery floss of any colour that you like. Hide that little knot inside the head and then get your needle and put it at an angle like so and be begin a drizzle stitch. So all you're going to do, cast on stitches over both the needle and the wire. You're going to carry on until you're happy and then just re-thread this strand through the needle and pull through. And you can see now why we had it at an angle. We had it at an angle so that it has that very triangular look to it once it's finished. Do a couple of back stitches, really, really tiny so you don't see the thread from any angle and finish up inside the beak. And then all you're going to do is chop off. So we're going to do exactly the same thing to create an eye. Hide that little knot inside the head. You're going to come up on one side with a single strand this time of black thread. Go straight across where you would like sort of the top part of the beak slash eye to be and begin a bullion knot. Now a bullion knot is just wraps around the needle and then pulled through. So you'll see the first bullion knot here and you're just going to secure that back through, a couple of back stitches through the bullion knot to hide it and to secure the bullion knot in place. And you're now going to do some eyes. Now you can use this design to create a goose. So just do one French knot where you'd like the first eye to be and then repeat that on the opposite side. Now this is a nice deviation from the pattern if you don't want to make a swan. And once you've done that, you're going to want to put a couple of back stitches in this black area just to secure the thread. You can use this for a goose design if you just want to use it like this. But if you don't and you want to do the swan, let's add a little head flare. So we're just going to tie a knot 
inside one of the cast on stitches and then start buttonhole stitching inside the cast on stitches top so just watch exactly what i am doing rather than what i'm saying because it makes a lot more sense visually than it does in words you just bring the needle through the top of the cast on stitches and create little loops exactly like so and you're going to do this for all of the stitches until you get down to the bottom bit of your stitching where your cast on stitch is finished and you'll see that it just adds a little bit of height to the head but it also gives him a little bit of grandeur they they do have swans like slight yellowing to their feathers so it's quite nice to have that depth once you've finished just secure that thread in the neck with a couple of tiny back stitches and chop it off now because I want to create a swan I'm going to go back in now I'm using a chenille needle this time as opposed to the fine beading needle two strands of black thread and I'm going to do one last bullion and I'm actually going to do this bullion exactly through the French knot eyes that I created so go take the needle straight through begin wrapping round lots of wraps here enough to cover the complete space between the eyes You're going to pull that through and secure. And you'll need to do a couple of back stitches through, exactly like we've been doing, just to secure that bullion knot down and make sure it's nice and secure for when you cut it off. Nothing's going to fray or move. You can see we now have a lovely swan. So I'm going to make the wings now in exactly the same way. Make sure that the wings are roughly around seven to eight centimetres long. You're going to go all the way around your pins and they're set in more of a triangle motion than the first body one was. And you're going to start weaving in exactly the same way that you've done the first woven pico and if you're not sure on how to do woven picots please do head over to my instagram i'm at that embroidery girl you'll find a wealth of knowledge over there that i have so many videos um, of how to do absolutely everything that you can ever imagine and some longer ones that i will be putting up on youtube over just the techniques of how to do woven picots in all a variety of different threads and uh, styles so you're going to go ahead and fill this wing up until it's completely full with woven threads and then you're just going to remove your pins and bring that thread and needle down to secure and you can see that's how the wing is going to look it's so cute so now you're going to prepare the second wing over the other side and then you're going to need to take a fine needle and some thread and just stitch them into place like so I'm actually going to adjust the second wing just because it was taking too much notice over the first. We're then going to do the back tail and this is going to be exactly the same. This is roughly around about uh, five centimetres long, a little bit wider than the other two picots for the wings. We're just going to begin weaving again. And we're going to weave until we've completely filled up this section. And once you finish that, again, you're going to take your pins out. And you're just going to push that up so it looks like a little fluffy tail part of the swan. And attach that with, again, a fine needle and some thread like so. I'm going to do the back part as well just to secure it because I don't want it kind of sticking up. And I'm just going to use the blade of my scissors to just fluff the body woven pico up. And there he is. He's completely finished. Well done. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and follow me on Instagram. I'm that embroidered.